fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again! from the campfire, the girl seemed more Spanish than Indian. Her English was nearly perfect, for she had spent many years at the mission school. But as she spoke to the Lone Ranger and Toto, the intensity of her emotion made her voice break now and then. Toto told me where I could find you and Toto. I have come to you because you are the only man who has influence with my father. And even now it may be too late. Too late for what, Don? My father, Storm Cloud, means to attack Fort Clark. Surely he wouldn't do anything so foolish. His counsel has been bad. The old men have convinced him that the building of the fort north of the desert is only the beginning. That settlers will come soon. No one will be allowed to settle in Indian territory. There are only a few soldiers at the fort now. About 20. Storm Cloud has been persuaded to attack before the garrison reinforced. But, Dawn, your father's braves have only a few rifles. The soldiers have many. All the ammunition they need and the walls of the fort to protect them. They'll be able to drive off any attack. Many of your young men will be killed. It not be like that. The night will be dark. And before the soldiers know what is happening, the Indians will be inside for it. I shouldn't tell you this. I am being a traitor to my father. But for the sake of one man, one of the soldiers... I cannot let him be killed. Who is this man? His name, Wayne. Oh, not alone. Young lieutenant at Fort called Wayne. Yes. He saved my life once. I not forget that. And he was my... my friend. My mission name was Mary. He found out my Indian name was Summer Dawn. And he called me Mary Sunshine. He was my friend. Now he is to marry Rose, the colonel's daughter. I understand how you feel about him, Dawn. But don't imagine you're being a traitor to your father. You're trying to keep him from making a terrible mistake. Now, tell me everything you know about his plans to attack the fort. How can the Braves possibly get inside without the soldiers knowing about it? There is small gates in the stockade. It will be open for them. By whom? Two men came to see my father. I heard them speak together. They promised gate would be open. Two men from the fort? No. Their names Black Mike and Duke Mantle. Mm, Sabi, them plenty bad. Yes, they're outlaws. They'd have no chance of opening the gates of the fort. I only know they gave their promise. And their reward was to be the gold in Colonel's office. 
Could there be someone inside the fort who's working with them? I not know. Have you any idea when the attack is supposed to be made? It will be soon. You will talk with my father. Before I can do that, I must warn the colonel. Yes, that is good. And then we can tell Storm Cloud that colonel has been warned. There is no chance for your attack to succeed. When did Black Mike and Mattel come to your village? Two nights ago. It has taken me till now to find you. It might have happened last night, or it may happen tonight. We'll not be able to reach the fort before morning. That is true. We'll settle the horses, Tonto. Uh-huh. It was rugged country the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Summer Dawn rode through that night. But by morning, they had reached the foothills. And as the first light showed in the east, they saw their first sign of disaster. A column of smoke rising toward the sky. They topped the final rise and drew rain. Oh, 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 oh. Below them stood the ruins of Fort Clark. Only the stockade remained. The buildings inside it were smoldering shells. The only sign of life were two horses grazing outside the walls. Too late. Ah. I shall never return to my father now. The little ranger studied the fort through his binoculars. I can see two men inside the walls. They're digging in the ruins. Them Indian? Uh, no, Tonto. Here, take a look, Don. Thank you. Now that the wolves have gone... Coyotes have come. Are those the two men you saw talking to your father? Yes. Black Mike, Duke Mantle. Uh, and then look for gold. Stay well behind us, Don. All right, let's go, Tonto. Come on, Silver. Get out. The Lone Ranger and Tonto guided Silver and Scout down the slope and across the rolling plain at an easy lope. Easy, Scout. Easy, 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 The horses were pulled to a walk as they neared the stockade and finally to a stop just outside the walls. Oh, oh, Scout. Easy, Scout. Easy, Scout. Easy, Scout. Easy, Scout. The main gates of the fort were wide open, and a short way beyond them, the two men were digging in the charred embers of what had once been the headquarters building. Up with your hands. Hey, Mac Man and an Indian. Get their guns, Tonto. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's talk this over. What, sir, do you talk about? Well, first, my partner and I had nothing to do with what happened here. Are you sure of that? It was Indians. But we happen to know the colonel was holding a shipment of gold here, waiting till he could spare an armed escort for it. You haven't found any gold, have you? No, but it's here somewhere. Help us find it and we'll split with you. Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don, uh, come here, please. Yes. These are the men. Black Mike and Duke Mantle. He knows us, Duke. This girl's the chief's daughter. You better warn these armies to go easy, sister. You know how we stand with your father. It was you who persuaded him to do this terrible thing. That's a lie. How did you manage to open the gates of the fort to the Indians? We had nothing to do with it. And how was it done? Maybe these dead men can tell you. Kim uh, Kavik. He tie up Mike and Duke. No, not yet, Toto. They'll dig graves for every one of these soldiers before we leave here. Oh, that's good. The ground was soft, and by late afternoon, 20 shallow graves had been dug for the soldiers who had been killed in the attack. When the last of them were covered, Mike and Duke were bound hand and foot. But neither Lieutenant Wayne nor the Colonel's daughter had been found. And before leaving, the Lone Ranger and Toto made a final search. The storehouse was the least damaged of the buildings. Though the roof had fallen in, three walls were still standing. As the masked man and the Indian moved aside charred and fallen timbers, they heard a faint cry. Cut up. Ah, me hear him. A section of the roof had fallen intact and was leaning against one of the walls. The cry came from beneath it. The Lone Ranger and Toto pulled back the roof section in and found a young soldier lying against the wall. Uh, He's still alive. Uh, him hurt. Plenty bad. The lieutenant. Mm-hmm. The fellow girl tell about. This Larry Wayne. I'll carry him out into the open. Better get the medicine. Get out. Yeah. It was not long after the lieutenant's wounds had been bandaged that he opened his eyes. The first person he saw was Summer Dawn sitting close beside him. Larry Sunshine. Yes, Larry. Your people, they, they came here. They not my people now. Did they find Rose? They may have taken her with them. She not here. Have you looked in the cellar? What cellar, Larry? Underneath the storehouse. We've cleared all the debris out of the storehouse. There's no trap door leading to a cellar. No, outside. Well, outside, I see. The rear wall, Toto, the one that collapsed. The cellar door must be underneath it. Oh, we find it. Don't let Larry talk too much, Don. No, sir. Don. He called you Dawn. I remember now. Summer Dawn. It's a better name than Mary Sunshine. 
You must rest, Clara. And do not worry. The next men will find your rose. Silver and Scott were called on to break aside the timbers of a fallen wall. No sooner had the cellar door been uncovered than it burst open. A man stepped out, his gun drawn. Your man? It's easy with a gun. We're friends. This Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Uh, Who are you? My, my name is Maitland. John Maitland. A civilian. Yes, I can see that. The storekeeper for the post. Is Colonel Parrish's daughter down there? Oh, yes. It, it's all right, Rose. These men are friends. Friend? Are you sure of that? He's an outlaw. No, no, no. I've heard of him. They call him the Lone Ranger. Oh, my... my father. Look around you, Miss Parrish. No. Nothing left. Were all of them killed? Lieutenant Wayne is still alive. Where? Where is he? Take me to him. All right, this way. The lieutenant isn't in any condition to talk much. I'd like you to tell me all you can about the attack on the fort. There's nothing much I can tell you. When we first heard the Indians, they were inside the stockade. My father took me to the storehouse and told Mr. Maitland to hide me down in the cell. He and I stayed there all through the fighting. When it was over, we tried to get out and couldn't. We thought we'd never get out. Well, where did your father keep his gold? What gold? Well, I understood your father had a large quantity of gold on hand. What was that? A prospector left it here. It was to be taken to Fort Rogers the next time we sent the fly wagons across the desert. Oh, well, there's Larry beside the fire. Larry? Oh, darling, how are you? How badly are you? Uh, just a moment, Maitland. Uh, yes? What about the gold? Well, I don't know anything about it. Not even where it was kept. Well, I suppose it was in the headquarters building or in the colonel's cabin. Oh, there's no sign of it in either place. Then the Indians must have taken it. I doubt it. Who are those two men you have tied up over there? Black Mike and Duke Mantle. We found them looking for the gold. It was they who arranged for the Indians to get inside the fort. The dirty renegades. How could they? They must have had help from someone attached to the garrison. A traitor here? Yes, Maitland. Any ideas who it might have been? It's unthinkable. There was someone. Well, those two men must know who he was. They refused to say anything. The bounds. The graves? Yes. Let me count them. If, if everyone were killed, there should be one more. Lieutenant Wayne is still alive. Yes, I've allowed for him. Someone must have escaped the massacre. The traitor you're speaking of. You must get word to Fort Rogers across the desert. And our prisoners must be delivered there. But there are problems to be considered when it comes to crossing the desert. There are eight of us. We have only five horses. Silver and Scout might be able to carry double. One of the others could. That Indian girl, you're not bothering about her, are you? What's she doing here, anyway? She brought us here, and she'll be traveling with us. You must have your look. A rider on hill to north. Maybe him scout for Storm Cloud. If Storm Cloud comes back here, we'll all be murdered. Get up! Get up! Girl's riding out to meet the scout. I'll stop her. Give me that gun. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Knocked Maitland's arm aside as he leveled his gun at summer dawn. 
The shot went wild, and in the next instant, the masked man had taken the gun away from the storekeeper. I better keep this. That girl's gone out to meet the scout. What of it? She's heard us talking. She knows we mean to get word of this massacre to Fort Rogers. If you bring Stormcloud back here, we'll all be killed. That girl is Summer Dawn. She's Stormcloud's daughter. She brought us a warning the fort was to be attacked. She did her best to prevent it. This morning, when we found the fort in ruins, she said she had never returned to her father's lodge. She'd be coming back here alone. I'm sure of it. The Lone Ranger was right. Summer Dawn talked with the Indian for only a few minutes and then raced back to the fort as he disappeared over the hill. Oh, are there roads, Daddy? Soon we have enough horses, Kimasabi. That young brave is bringing them? Yes. He is strong, though. Hey, friend. Did he bring any word from your father's village? The braves have feasted. Now they sleep. Soon they ride again. We must be gone before then. I'm wondering if the lieutenant will be able to ride. I think so. If we ride tonight when it is cool, rest tomorrow, then ride tomorrow night again, that will bring us to Fort Rogers. We'll need a tent for him to rest in and water enough for the whole trip. Let's see if we can find some cakes, Tonto. Uh-huh. Watch the prisoners, Don. I shall. <laughs> Ranger and Tonto had filled two kegs with water and had found an army tent in the wreckage of the storehouse by the time Strongbow returned with three Indian ponies. Then the party prepared to leave the fort. The outlaws were released from their bonds, but only to allow them to mount. Afterwards, their hands were tied to the pommels of their saddles. Next, the Lone Ranger helped the lieutenant to his feet and realized at once he was too weak to ride alone. Oh, I've, I've changed my mind, Lieutenant. We'll use one of the ponies as a pack horse. I didn't carry the water in the tent. You ride silver with me. Well, you have a great horse, sir, but carry double across the desert. Right? We'll not be moving fast. Silver can carry the extra weight. I'd like to try to ride. Well, perhaps tomorrow night. All right, up you go. There. There was another slight delay when Maitland ran down to the cellar to get his money box. But at last, everyone was in the saddle. Strongbow placed a detaining hand on the bridle of Dawn's mount. These people, not your people. It better you not go with them. I must find the new home. In my father's face, I would always see faces of men he killed here last night. Strongbow, not here. I know you have made yourself an outcast from the tribe because of me. You ride with me far away. Find new hunting ground. No, my friend. Strong bow, understand. Goodbye. Come on, Sunday. The little cavalcade rode slowly out of the fort and into the desert. The Lone Ranger and the Lieutenant were at the head of the column, and Tonto rode last to keep an eye on the prisoners. The white miles stretched before them, the wasteland broken only by great buttes and rock clusters. The ruined fort faded into the distance with no sign of pursuit, and the moonlit desert seemed to embrace the little band and promise security. They made steady progress all through the cool hours of the night. But dawn came, and the first touch of the sun turned the barren land into a furnace. Who's it? Oh, they stopped at a butte. Ten feet from its base, a shelf projected far out and promised shade through the day. There was no need for the tent. Lieutenant Wayne, very weak now, was lifted from the saddle and placed on a blanket. The women cooked breakfast, and as they ate, the Lone Ranger and Toto talked in low tones. The lieutenant is too weary to ride far tonight. Mm, not what me think. Better ride under the fort. Scout's still fresh. See if you can bring an ambulance out to meet us. That's a good idea. Here, Scout. Easy, fella. Get him up, Scout. Where? Where's Tuttle going? To the fort. He's deserting us? I've sent him for an ambulance. And we have to wait here until he gets back with us. No, we'll start out again as soon as it's dark. Oh, I see. Your, uh, your prisoners want some water. All right, here's a canteen. Don't let them have more than just a few swallows. Right. Here you are. The masked man says only a few swaps. What are you going to do, something? When the right time comes. What can you do? We took your gun. I have another hidden down in the cellar. I got it when I went back to the strong box. Where's the gold? In my strong box, of course. And all you have to do is put a bullet through the masked man. Afterwards, we'll take all the horses and leave the lieutenant and the girls here. You need the horses, that's sure. 
The eastern rim of the desert is a lot farther than the fort. When are you going to take care of the last man? When it's dark. Oh, why wait, Len? He watches me as closely as he watches you. I'm going to wait until he has his hands full. He's watching you now. Yes, I know. We have the moment all figured out. But he picks up the lieutenant and starts carrying him to his horse. Oh, Mason. Oh, y- yes, sir. I had a few swallows. But that's all they're getting. They give me that canteen. Just leave everything to me. The long, hot hours of the day passed slowly. It was with relief the little party watched the sun sink behind the western mountains. The Lone Ranger gave the order to break camp, and the moment came for departure. It was already dark. The last man lifted Lieutenant Wayne in his arms, and Maitland's voice froze everyone in their tracks. All right now, mister. They're going to die. Summer dawn was tightening the cinch of her saddle. She turned to see Maitland's gun pointed directly at the Lone Ranger and Lieutenant Wayne. So you were the traitor inside the fort, Maitland? Yes. Duke and Mike were your Confederates. They made the bark of the storm cloud right again. The gold is in your strong box. Yes, you have the whole story, mister. Now... <laughs> With a wild cry, Dawn started running straight toward Maitland. He swung his gun to cover her, but before he could pull the trigger, his eyes widened in terror. The gun dropped from his grasp. He threw up his hands and pitched forward on his face. The light of the rising moon gleamed on the handle of a knife set squarely between his shoulder blades. A knife? Who threw it? Strongbow, see what happened. Strongbow throw knife. Strongbow? Where you come from? Me follow you. You arrived just in time. Man dead, let me see. Yes. He deserved to die. I'll not argue with that. You saved my life, Strongbow. Your life not safe. Me come to warn you, the Chief Stormcloud. Ah. Indian scout find graves in fort, follow tracks in the desert. Him tell Stormcloud. Me close to village, hear what Chief say. He's coming after us. Ah. Him say, men who bury soldier go to Fort Roger now. Indian must stop them. Leave me here, sir. You and the others can get away from them. I'll stay with you, Larry. We'll all stay. I ride back. I try to reason with my father. That no good. Him swear to kill you. Now listen to me and look at this butte. On this side, it's possible to climb to the top. Up there, no bullet or arrow can hit us. The Indians can climb up after us. They'll have to do a single file. One man can stop them. What about the horses? Did we just leave them here? Silver will lead them out of danger. Go on, boy, go! <laughs> At the Lone Ranger's command, Silver raced away from the butte, the other horses following him. We can depend on Silver not to take them too far. We'll be able to call them back when we need them. Uh, Rose, Dawn, suppose you go first. All yeah. right. Rose and Dawn started climbing the steep side of the butte. The two prisoners were forced to follow, Strongbow keeping them covered every second with a six-gun the Lone Ranger gave him. Last came the last man and Lieutenant Wayne, and before they reached the top, Storm Cloud and his braves swept out of the night. The lieutenant was lifted to safety just in time, and the Lone Ranger pulled himself up after him, took cover, and returned the Indian's fire. Storm Cloud realized the butte must be taken and ordered his braves up the side. But there was only one break in the sheer wall, and the last man's rapid fire drove them back. Good work, sir. We can hold out as long as our ammunition does. Strongbow see cloud of dust to south. Wait, Tonto, and the ambulance you sent for. The driver and Tonto, they'll be killed. We'll try to warn them there's trouble. But they aren't stopping at all. It would take more than an ambulance and one horse to make that cloud of dust. That right. And stretch back a long way. It's soldiers. It must be a whole squadron. The colonel's acting quickly. My father means to stand and fight. There can be only one end to it, Dawn. I know. Those who live by the sword must die by the sword. The stand and fight was a rash decision for Stormcloud to make. He paid for it with his life. And all the other leaders who had urged him to attack Fort Clark were killed during the Battle of the Buttes. The Indians who survived the battle 
and surrender to Colonel Ashley were marched to Fort Rogers. There they were placed in a stockade, and there they stayed until General Wilkes arrived to confer with the colonel. The Lone Ranger was summoned to their conference, then Summer Dawn and Strongbow, and finally a great council was held inside the stockade. On the following morning, Rose Parrish, who was sitting beside Lieutenant Wayne's bed in an upper room of the post hospital, pointed out the window. Oh, look, Larry. The Indians are leaving the stockade. So they finally signed a treaty. They must have. They must have elected someone as their chief that the general can trust. I wonder who it can be. I, I wonder who that can be. Why not open the door and find out? Yes, Lieutenant. Sir. Why, Mary, it's summer dawn. Oh, come in, my dear. Good morning. Hello, Mary Sunshine. The sun is shining today. It's shining in your face. I've never seen you look so happy. I am happy. And before I go, I want to wish you two all the happiness in the world. Thank you. Go? Where are you going? Home. With your people, but... I thought you never meant to return. Things be different now. I hope so. Say, who's your new chief going to be? The Braves have chosen Strongbow. Oh, wonderful. Oh, that's great. And Strongbow... Strongbow has chosen me. My dear, my very best wishes. Well, what do you think of that? Little Mary Sunshine getting married. Little Mary Sunshine was a child, Lieutenant Wayne. I am woman and wise enough now, I hope, to help Strongbow teach our people the ways of peace. I'm not worried about that. Nor am I. For there is someone else who will be helping us both. He has promised. And how can we fail when we can count on wisdom and courage... Of the Lone Ranger. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Uh-huh.